You know what? There aren't enough educated, progressive black male voices. No politically correct bullshit. I'm just one guy with a valuable opinion, bringing you the real, for real. This is the last episode for this season. We will be back season two. <sighs> I'm sure y'all read the title. Listen, I had to do... <laughs> Christina, why are you laughing? You silly. Yeah. I, I, I felt convicted to talk about this. I am pansexual. And I've never shared that with anybody before. And the reason why is because, not you know, this is not me coming out. I just want to be very clear. I've never, I was never in. It was, it was never in. You silly. What is you like? I was never in. I'm excited. You excited? I was never mm -hmm. in. You know, I just live my life the way I live it. And whatever people think is what people think. I, I don't really care. But I'm pansexual and I've been pansexual since I was born. And I felt convicted to speak about my sexuality because after a while, I just got tired of... Well, first of all, after a while, I just didn't care anymore. I didn't care. I still... I mean, I, I don't think I ever really cared, to be honest. But I'm a very private person, a very naturally private person. So for me, I just... I didn't care to share, you know? And I just didn't have that experience like a lot of people had I was very blessed to just be be able to just be myself and a lot of people I understand that don't don't have that experience but I did and I'm grateful for that but you know my my pansexuality is just like everybody's sexuality is a very nuanced specific to individual thing and I got tired of people trying to group who I who I am in with all kinds of things and it's just like chill so I felt convicted to just be like you know what I've never seen anybody talk about pansexuality I never really seen anybody talk about this particular you know identity so I was like why don't I do it you know and so that's what I'm doing today I've dedicated this episode to that and some, you know, you'll see once, you know, you'll watch it. But just to give you a heads up, I will also be interviewing Christina. Ew. Listen, you're going to learn who Prelo really is, okay? <laughs> All the nooks and crannies, okay? All the nooks and crannies. Why she drinks coconut milk. Coconut water. I was going to say. Sorry, you. coconut water. All right. Mm -hmm. Milk, water. It's all nasty um <laughs> it's an acquired taste. it's an it's definitely an acquired not like and it's not like an acquired taste like lobster like lobster is an acquired taste but everybody thinks lobster tastes good like no <laughs> it, it's kind of like really nasty lee acquired oh my god but i'm gonna get off let me get off that let me get off that. i'm gonna get off your coconut water water excuse me water tasting ass but <laughs> Yeah, let's get it. <laughs> let's get into the very last segment of the first season. This is the real, the real, the real, the real, the real, for real, for real. So, as I said earlier, I am pansexual, but I wanted to give y'all some definition because you know motherfuckers be stupid and too lazy to look up something real quick and basic. Let me tell you, if I had a cellular device, like a smartphone when I was in elementary school, I would be a freaking genius. Right. Because it, it takes nothing to look something up nowadays. Mm -hmm. People be like, what's that? Right. Look it up. I the dictionary from the, the bookshelf. Girl, we just had to go get a whole book. Mm-hmm. Heavy. Yes. And I would be a genius by now. But pansexual. Quite a few definitions I'm going to read. Pansexual. Not limited in sexual choice with regard to biological sex, gender, or gender identity. Pansexuality is sexual, romantic, or emotional attraction towards people regardless of their sex or identity, or gender identity. Pansexual people may refer to themselves as gender blind, asserting that gender and sex are not determining factors in their romantic sexual attraction to others. These are all true things, very true to me at least. And there is one more definition I saw. I can't find it right now. Oh. Like everyone else, pansexual people may be attracted to some people and not others. But the gender of the person does not matter. People of any gender identity can and do identify as pansexual. 
the romantic, emotional, and or sexual attraction to people regardless of their gender. And I've always felt that way. Let me tell y'all a story. I have not shared any of this. What I'm sharing with you today is something I've never shared with my parents, something I've never shared with my brother, my sister, you know, and I love and trust all of these people. I just, I'm a private person. Plus, I am highly intelligent. I always felt like nobody would ever understand. And for even now, as I'm sharing it, I just feel like people won't understand. But I don't care anymore. That's what I'm saying. I'm 32 now. And it's like, I don't care if nobody understands. And I've reached that point. And it wasn't something I did in meditation. It wasn't something that I thought about. I literally woke up one day and was like, I just don't care. Hmm. So I'm going to share. And if you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. And I'm so glad I've reached that, reached that place now versus being like 40 or 50, like right. most people are. And they have that realization, but they still keep it quiet. Mm-hmm. So I'm blessed and I'm honored in that way. But I'm going to tell you a story. When I was a child, elementary school... I had a girlfriend, I had a boyfriend, like a fake girlfriend, fake boyfriend. I was in kindergarten. I still remember their names. I was about to say them, but I was like- I was about to say mm. I was about to say Because <laughs> I heard one of them was, I heard the boy was in jail, so I was like, mm, oh. like prison. So I was yeah, like, yeah. no, let me chill on that. Right. But I, I did, and for the longest time, and I wonder if you're listening, if you've had the same experience, please leave a comment and let me know. From from kindergarten up until like second grade, I thought everybody liked everybody. I was like, "Isn't this how it's supposed to go?" Mm-hmm. Like, I like boys, I like girls. I was like, I didn't, I didn't think of, I didn't think too much of it. I remember my teacher, God rest her soul, Miss Hankin, I believe was her name, <sighs> caught me in the bathroom with. Ooh, I was about to say that child's name. <laughs> Brought me in the bathroom with this boy. And she was like, no, you're not supposed to do that with boys. And that stuck out to me because I I had been doing the same thing with girls. Now, she didn't catch me, but I was like, I want, so I can't do, so because he's a boy, like, it seemed like because he was a boy, that was like the reason. And, you know, I, I, I used to be explorative with girls too. Because I liked girls. I still do, you know? And as I got older, like second grade, third grade, I started to see the finger pointing, the conformity. And I want to be clear, this did not come from my mother. This did not come from my father. Again, I was blessed. My parents were very, they're very intelligent people. So, and, you know, they love me. So it's like, they love my me, my brother, my sister. Like, they love their family. So... I would love to hear their experience, like their point of view, but this is my point of view. So up until like the third grade, second grade, I thought everybody was like me. I thought everybody liked girls, everybody liked boys. I thought the whole, <laughs> I thought the whole world was here for, for me. I was like, I like all of this shit. Mm-hmm, yes, yeah. yes, yes. And when I realized it was like, <laughs> Christina, you wasn't like that? crashing in a kindergarten yeah it was a little boy Mm -hmm. Mm. i know his name too but continue right you be you remember them first (laughs) and uh, yeah so i thought everybody was all the same and the conformity the 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 finger pointing the nose i realized like oh it's because i like boys that people are like nah you can't do that that's not Mm -hmm. how you're supposed to be and I used to be like, but how the fuck am I supposed to not? Like, how, how do I stop? Right. I used to really just be like, well, okay, so I'm, I'm going to just stop. Right. And it didn't stop, by the way. It won't stop. And that's, my, that's the point I'm doing. The reason why I'm doing this. Because it's not going nowhere, y'all. I'm talking to all you DL dudes. It's never going nowhere. <laughs> but yeah, so I was just like, dang. What am I supposed to do? And... <laughs> I remember having like a little fake girlfriend on a block or whatever. I remember her name too. I mean, listen, I remember everybody. <laughs> and I really liked her. And I remember my uncle, God rest his soul, Stav, and his friends. Now, my uncle Stav was necessarily a part of this, but he was definitely standing there. And there were like a bunch of older guys. They were like 18, probably 16. I was like 11, or maybe younger than that, like nine or something. And. I already liked the girl or whatatever, but I could see that she was uncomfortable because they was like surrounding her and she was out there talking to them. 
And I'm a little boy. I tell you, I was very educated and smart and just like different. I was a different child. I was across the street on Demarest. And I remember walking across the street because I could see that she was uncomfortable surrounded by all those older dudes like that. So I walked across the street and was like, hey, I know her name. And shout out to her because she I still am friends with her. But and she was like, hey, and she jumped off that that porch and was like, yeah. came to talk to me. And it was like, oh, this this you, this you. Y'all too old to be talking to her, first right, of all. Right. But second of all, no, I mean, that's just my friend. Now, I did like her, and she knew that. But then they tried to get me to kiss her. They was like, yeah, why don't y'all kiss? Oh, no. And my uncle was like, he looked at me and grabbed me and pulled me next to him. And I was just looking at my uncle's staff like, and she was like, no, I, y'all, stop trying to make him kiss me, y'all. Like, she was, she had gotten, like, yeah, yeah. gravatas, I guess, to... Be like, no, like, don't try to make him kiss me. Right. And I really did want to kiss her on the low. I was like, but I wasn't going to do that if she didn't want to. Right. My point is, this weird, this weird, how do I say this? I guess juxtaposition or, or just, or just uh, standard stereotypes. I don't even know what to call it. I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a blank right now. But this weird dynamic where it's like, this is a girl, I'm a guy, who, a boy who likes her. And for whatever reason, y'all think this is okay to, to try to get me right. to kiss her. Mm-hmm. But if I was to reveal to you that I also like these boys, it would be a whole, it would be like a treacherous act mm-hmm. that you just committed. But it's okay. But also that's really inappropriate what they're doing to me oh, with her. Absolutely. But it wasn't seen that way. And that's my point. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm bringing this story up. I've had these experiences. And even though, on, like I said, on the low, I was like, okay. I might want to do that. And I remember she grabbed my arm, pulled me to the back, and she was, or pulled me to, like, on the other side of the street. And my uncle came with her. And my uncle said to me, he was like, you ain't had to, you ain't had to do nothing with her. I wasn't going to let that happen. Trust me. I was just standing there. I could understand that he was trying to, like, save face, but also, like, because my uncle said, let's be clear, my uncle, he would die. He would have died for me. Mm. Let's be very clear. Uncle Stab would have definitely killed somebody. So I knew he wouldn't have had me whatever. But she was the one who grabbed me and ran to the back or whatever, like ran me to the back or whatever. She was like, you don't have to kiss me if you want to. And then she was like, do you want to? I was like, (laughs) yes. And then we kissed. But, right. But, you know, actually I have something to tell you, Christina. I'm going to tell you and I'm going to just bleep it. (laughs) So yeah, that was a little tidbit just for Christina. <laughs> Life. Yo. Life for happens. Real, for real. And so I will never forget that moment because it let me know that a society believes that a lot of things are okay, but mm. if it doesn't fit within the group think, yep. then we got to kill it. We got to ostracize it. We got to get this quote unquote sickness out of here. As far as sexuality is concerned, and I think this is very important, some people believe that um, people like me are perverted. They believe that our brains, there's something that happened to us in birth. I've been told you can tell on your skin. I've been told you can tell in your DNA. I've been told that these perversions are, are... ruining society and you're not going to be able to produce children and you're ruining you know christ does not want this and you belong in hell there are people right now who are going to be watching this there are people who want to be looking at this going you're sick you're foul you're disgusting you're dirty you don't belong here there are people who want me killed there are people who literally hate me just because I exist the way I do, naturally so, something I didn't choose. There are people who believe that this is a choice. How can you be born gay? How can you be born pan? How can you be born bi? How can you be born straight? (laughs) And what I have to say to all of that is this. When I tried to kill myself when I was a kid, twice, three times in fact, but the two times that I did so because I could not change myself, I came to the realization that the reason why I was not successful in trying was because I wasn't meant to. And I was raised in the church, Christian, 
Baptist church, and I still love Christ, and I'm a devout Christian, I've always been. Christ was revealed to me plenty of times when I was a kid, and I will never not believe in God and Christ. But I remember thinking I didn't want this. And the reason why was because I didn't get it. I just didn't get it. I was a little boy and I couldn't understand why people were calling me a fag. I couldn't understand why people were calling me a sissy. And you, if you think my hair is long now, I had even longer hair. And if you think my voice is soft now, my voice, I sounded like a complete girl when I was younger. People used to mistake me for a girl all the time. And this is naturally so. I didn't have hair anywhere. I didn't grow hair until I was like 22 on my face in college and my brother and my father, everybody had like hair. They were like, they looked more manly than I did. And I was just naturally androgenistic my entire life. And I'll speak about that too later on. But I just find it interesting that who I was naturally was a problem for so many people and I wasn't doing anything. I believe your subconscious mind and then your conscious mind picks up on a lot of things that help you become who you are, your mannerisms, the way you sound, the way you speak, the way you walk, the way you talk, etc. So a lot of my being is subconscious, something I'm not doing on purpose. The rest of it is through DNA, I suppose, personality traits, however, and then some conscious choices. I can tell you with full confidence that I've never consciously chose to look like a woman, to sound like a woman, to have long nails like a woman, to have soft skin like a woman. These are things that people attribute to my femininity. And these are natural things that I don't control. And for whatever reason, people apply those natural states, my natural state of existence to sexuality. I've never done that to myself. And so when I was a kid, they would be like, oh, you're a fag, oh, you gay, oh, you must be gay. And I just, I didn't get that because I definitely wasn't. And I was like, why do they keep saying this? And I just didn't get it. So I remember trying to kill myself because I just, I got tired of hearing that you're, who you are naturally is wrong. Mm. And the first time I tried, God rest his soul, it was at my Uncle Jay's house. Nobody, nobody knows this. I took a, a bottle of pills. I was raised basically in the hospital. I was sick all the time, and I knew that taking pills and medication and stuff like that, you're not supposed to do that. And I didn't know what kind of pills they were. Mm -hmm. I know for a fact that it wasn't Tylenol because I know what that looks like, but they weren't Tylenol pills. I was downstairs in the basement. There were some pills upstairs on the microwave. I took those pills, ran downstairs to the basement, and I drank the entire bottle mm -hmm. and drank some water and just waited to die downstairs in the basement in Irvington at his house. And... Nothing happened. And I remember thinking, okay. Y'all, that same night, them pills came out. <laughs> I, not to make this light of this situation, yeah. but I was really like in the toilet like, okay, God. Um, another time I tried to drown myself. That did not work. I think, I think, I don't even want to say her name, but I think my cousin noticed I don't think she, I don't, I don't know. That might be a trauma for her. That's why I don't even want to really bring it up. But I think she might have noticed and helped me. But I don't think she remembers that. I might call her and ask her if she remembers. And then the very last time, I tried to suffocate myself. And for my mother and father watching, y'all remember, because the window in my room was cracked. And I never told you how I cracked it. I lied to you and said it was something else. But the reason, the, the way I cracked it was because I was suffocating myself. I tied something around my neck and I was on a bunk bed at the top and I tied it really, really, really tight and kept tying it. I'm just like squeezing it even tighter, even tighter, even tighter. And once I could get, once I got it as tight as possible, I then took my hands and put them around my neck and my eyes went black. They were open, but they went black. And that's when I started to panic. And I start flailing, 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 and that's how I hit the window. And the window cracked. That window crack was in my window for like 20 years. Mm -hmm. My father just recently replaced those windows not too long ago. But now you know how I cracked that window. Dwight didn't even, my brother Dwight didn't even know. He heard me flailing and got up and helped me. And then my parents all came to the back of the room and they were like, what's happening? And I, we just kind of froze. And I didn't, I didn't tell nobody what I was doing. And I remember distinctively waking up the very next day, and there's a picture on Facebook somewhere. Hopefully I can find it and put it in the video. I remember specifically taking a picture of myself that day, the very next morning, and saying to myself, that's it. 
from here on out, I'm going to love myself. Because clearly God doesn't want me to go. It's not my time. And whatever I'm dealing with, whatever circumstance I am dealing with, whatever feelings that I have, I'm supposed to have them. So that's it for me. That's it. Mm. And I took a picture, and I remember that picture. Every time I see it, I just there's a pain in my spirit because I'm like, I remember. Mm. I say all that to say, imagine going through all of that and then somebody going, you're a fag, you're, you're perverted, you're, you chose this, this is, and you're looking at them like, but I didn't. And whether you believe it or not, I don't care. I can't care. I am who I am. God made me this way because if I had a choice, I promise you I would choose something different. And the very, even today, even now, because who the fuck would want to live like this? Every time I leave my house, I got to be worried about if somebody's going to call me a name or mistake me as a woman or act like it's my fault that I did something because you liked me. You saw me and now it's my fault because right. you thought I was like, nigga, what? Like, <laughs> I didn't mean to say the N word, excuse me, but it's like, so I have to leave my house on guard every single time. Imagine living like that. You think I would choose this? You think somebody would choose this? And I'm androgynistic. You know, I, I, I'm masculine and feminine, naturally so. Imagine the feminine men out here who are just, like, yeah. comfortable or the trans people who are more comfortable. They get in trouble. Not in trouble because that sounds weird. But they, they are attacked and harmed just for simply existing all the time. All the time. And I have to deal with that. And you think I chose it. You're stupid. You're foolish. As much as you thump that fucking Bible, you mm. don't actually know what it means. God is love. And if you think for a second that God doesn't love me, something's wrong with you, not me. Okay? <sighs> I discovered that I was pansexual, or at least the word pansexual, because at that time, the only words that I knew were gay and bi and trans. I went, to, you know, North Public School System, people talk shit about it, but I learned a lot in North Public School System. We watched a lot of documentaries when I was in elementary school, elementary school, before I even got to high school, where we were introduced to trans people and gay people, and we spoke to a lot of, the, we had seminars and all those kinds of things like that, and the first time I heard it, I was like in seventh grade, and I believe her name was, she was a light-skinned woman. She was my, I think, language teacher, Miss... B. I remember Miss B, but I can't remember her full name. And she was talking about sexuality. And she was like, there's a lot of, somebody had said something really derogative. And she was like, excuse me, don't use that word. If you're going to describe somebody as homosexual or whatever, whatever. And then she was like, there's like this and this and this. She started saying other sexualities. And she started to explain what they were. And she said pansexual. And they were like, what's that? And they were making jokes. Oh, people out here having sex with pants. I was like. Of course they did. And that stuck in my head, and that's the reason why I never told anybody that I was pansexual, because okay. people are that stupid that they really believe that you out here having sex with, with pants and pots. Because, you know, people are attracted, some people have attraction to, like, inanimate objects, like mm -hmm. trees and shit like that. So people get stupid and go like, oh, you, you like pants? Like, it's dumb. Right, right. So I never expressed myself in that way. I just used to let people think what they wanted to think, and up until I'm 32, like, I, I don't care. You know, I've had all kinds of experiences. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I remember, and when she described it, I remember making a mental note going, well, yeah, that's, that's definitely me. I, I am that. I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't care. It, it all looks good to me. I just, and <laughs> for the life of me, for the life of me, I just could not understand how everybody didn't like it. I was like, how y'all don't? So when you see this, that don't look good to you? When I see a woman, when I see a man, mm -hmm. trans experience or not, it doesn't matter. I be like, yeah, 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 that's, yeah, what's that? That's good. That's, that's yeah, that looks, I mean, <laughs> like, I just never, for so many years, I just could not understand, like, why y'all don't like it too? Like, yeah. this all looks good. And and furthering than just like a physical attraction, it's like I would be with that. Mm -hmm. I would be very comfortable mm -hmm. with Sonali Lathan. I just would. A type, obviously, because, you know. Or like, you know, a red man. I, w I mean. <laughs> I was waiting for it. Listen. Very comfortable. Okay. 
I just couldn't understand why everybody wasn't like me. And I just kind of like observe, I became observing of people like, oh, okay. And then I started to see that there was like a secret society mm. where it was like, shh, don't say anything. But I like this too. And I didn't like that. So I stayed away from it for a very long time. And I'm skipping a lot of things because we don't got time for that on the podcast. Listen, my therapist, listen, my therapist had to do with some things. But I, I just remember th- seeing this secret society and going, rejecting it. Because I never was in a closet. I never hid who I was. I just simply didn't share my privacy. And the way I classify privacy is like this. <laughs> when I'm in the shower and I take my big ass leg and I put it on the, <laughs> I put it on the ledge of the shower and I take my washcloth, white, okay. pure cotton, okay. and I take the Dove soap and I get it sized up. And then I reach down under my balls to scrub and clean my gooch, my balls, and my pretty penis. That is a, I know you're very uncomfortable listening to that. That's, a, that's okay. It's a very, it. that's a private moment. Yeah. Is it a secret that I don't share with people that? No. No. Because that's privacy. Either, right. So I wasn't keeping secrets. I wasn't in the closet. I was just simply not sharing with you how I clean my balls. <laughs> and that's how I looked at it. I never felt like I had to come out or whatever. Right. Because for what? Also, f- from elementary school, I mean, I had low experiences in elementary school. I was like kindergarten, whatever. But that stopped after a while because for whatever reason, and this is all true, I just became unattractive to boys my age. I liked girls my age, but boys my age, I just, there was nothing. Because of that, it was easy for me to keep my privacy because I was never interested in none of y'all motherfuckers anyway. <laughs> you can ask everybody in elementary school and high school. None of them dudes will ever say he tried to hit on me, he tried to kiss me, he tried none of that because I was not interested in none of y'all. Now, the teachers, <laughs> I don't know why. I was looking at them like, mm, okay, let me do my homework. What? Cause you know that's statutory. That's you know I I couldn't do nothing. So I was like I can't wait till I turn 20, <laughs> 21, 18, whatever. Get to college and for you know. Real. But I was only attracted to girls my age, so it was easy for me to have girlfriends and true relationships with them. You know what I'm saying? I ain't never faked nothing. Mm. I remember being in high school, and I know her name, but I'm not gonna say it. Shout out to her. You know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna say it. Her name was Jarena. And hey, Jarena was in a hallway. <laughs> she was so funny. I love her. She knows I love her. But she was in a hallway, and she was like. I was dating someone, and she was like, oh, that's your beard? I said, my what? She's like, your beard. And I was just, I don't even, I didn't even have facial hair. I was like, mm-hmm. what are you talking about? She was like, your beard. Like, that's the, that's, that's the girl that you have so that nobody know that you like boys. I was like, is that a thing? Like, no. No. And I was just like, no. And she did not believe me. Right. But that was the first time I thought to myself, are people actually doing this? And y'all, like a month later, I met a couple who did that. And I was like, mm-hmm. this is a thing. It really is. I didn't even know that. I was like, no, I'm real happy with her. I like her. I love her, yeah. in fact. I was like in love with her. I was like, I, no, this, I, nope. Nope. <laughs> and if you were to talk to her, and if she was to share like moments from my experiences, she would not. She would not be like, "Oh, they were fake." Like it was real. It was real. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I enjoyed it. I. I mean, I, I really did. Was in. Love, was in love with her for years. We were together, and when we broke up, that's when I was like, "Dun dun da da." I can finally see about these men out here, because now I'm older, and I felt like, "Well, I can date older men now right. because I'm older." Right. And like you I said, I wasn't. I just wasn't attracted to guys my age. I just simply wasn't. And I, and I, and I did. And I remember thinking, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's interesting because I was in college <laughs> and I was deeply like head over heels with this one girl. Oh my gosh. And everybody around me knew it. Everybody, I mean, she knew. I told her eventually. She was like, yeah, no. <laughs> She was not interested. Okay. Like, at first. Because yeah. then after that, she started doing a little shit like calling me baby, calling me on the phone. We went on dates to the movies and just hanging out a lot more. And I remember this one time I was in her dorm room. Mm-hmm. I'm really sharing a lot. Lord, my mother said, don't share too much. Ah! 
mom. And I remember we was in her dorm room. I don't know why she did this. But I was sitting on her couch. She had called me to her dorm room. Mind you, her dorm room was on the other side of campus. I walked two miles and was happy. Love. And went to her dorm room. And I was sitting on the couch. And she came over and she was like, you're not going to hug me? And she was, she was Latin. You're not going to hug me? Puerto Rican, to be specific. I believe. And she was like, you're not going to hug me? And she walked over to me and kind of like got on top of me. I was sitting there and she like, I was, I was, I, I was like, <laughs> have self-control. Right. But she would do little shit like that. And it never, like I said, it never went anywhere. And there was okay. this other girl that I liked at the school too. And then, like I said, I started, well, by then I had, I had mm-hmm. there were quite a few guys that I hadn't seen. <laughs> and I was like you know I felt like mm-hmm. I could do this and I remember saying to myself it was like 2009 or 2010 I remember saying to myself in my in my dorm room I was like and then this is where the nuance is going to come so please pay attention and make sure that camera because it might cut off yeah you good I said to myself I think I'm going to only date men for the rest of my life mm-hmm. Now, some of you might go, well, doesn't that make you gay? Because you're ignorant. No. I mean, because I have the choice, does it mean that it takes away from anything else? Because I can choose, it doesn't mean that I all of a sudden have just lost. Like, if I choose to stop drinking milk, because my good Lord Jesus, lactose intolerant. It doesn't mean I don't like milk. Because I, let me tell you, so I love milk. I know. You whole, full fat, utter the cow. Fresh, fresh or pasteurized. Uh-huh. I love milk. And I, I, you know, just because I stopped consuming it doesn't mean I don't like it. So let's be smart here. But I remember making that choice. And the reason why was because I like the experience better not the sex not the gender the experience better i don't know why it was just it was just it was simple Mm. i think women deserve to have so much and i respect women so much so when when I'm when I'm thinking about being with a woman, which I you know I, again I, I respect it. I, I I really think women deserve the world. Really, it's it's a it's a stronger, more more involved experience. And for some reason, when I'm like dating a man, I don't be thinking about none of that. Sorry, the camera cut off. But yeah, so. I think women deserve the world. But when I'm dating a man, the, the experience is more simple. And I don't know, I just like that ease. I, I'm the first person to tell you, I don't want children, I've never wanted children. And that has nothing to do with my sexuality, because people will go there. I've never wanted children, I like a simple, easier life. I grew up in a very difficult neighborhood in Newark, New Jersey, so my experience is just, it's just different experience. I have different wants. I love a simple thing. and. I find being with men in that way, not that, and again, this is not because you can't find a woman like that. Like, you know, it's not about that. It's really just about the experience. I enjoyed that. And with all that said, it doesn't stop anything. It doesn't stop me from seeing a woman and being attracted to her and, and thinking like, oh, I could, I could be with her or wa- like wanting someone. It will never stop that because that's not how it works. And I just thought it was important for me to verbalize that and have some like have a place where somebody can go to and see that thing. I've been in love with a woman and I I've been in love with a man. <laughs> in fact, I recently fell in love with someone who I still love to this day. And I know my mother and my father are probably gonna be like, what? <laughs> and I fell in love with this man last year, 2021, and it wasn't, it wasn't intentional. I wasn't, we weren't trying to fall in love. And I think that's when it's the most beautiful. I've had so many serendipitous, beautiful moments. And I, yeah, just even sharing this right now is so strange to me because it's, 
my sexuality, my sexual experiences, my sexual exploration has always been a private thing that I covet and I've shared with quite a few people, but you know, basically kept it to myself because it's such a peaceful experience mm. for me. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't go to clubs, I don't go to bars. And this one thing I just hold, you know, this it's mine. It's I don't want to share with anyone else. I want to just have this peaceful thing. I want to be happy and I just want to live the way I live. I remember my aunt Temple Jordan saying to me years ago, she said, I don't care what your what the church say, what your father say, what your mother say, do what makes you happy and don't care about what anyone says. And that was incredible advice, especially considering it wasn't about, I, I don't know why she said that, because we, we were talking about something else. <laughs> and she just said that. And I said, okay. And my aunt Temple Jordan is incredibly smart. Inc like literally, like, like book, book smart, like score, test scores out of the world smart. So when she says something, I listen. And I remember hearing that and thinking to myself, I don't care what people think. I don't care to share because then when you, you know, if you share a piece of gum with somebody, they don't got to eat it. Mm -hmm. They can throw that piece of gum on the ground. Yeah. After you give it away to somebody, it's not yours anymore. So I don't have to share that. In fact, that I'm opening up and sharing this with you all. Again, it's not me coming out. It's just me sharing things that you ain't got no business knowing. The people who know are the ones who need to know. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, I just wanted my peace. But I think it's important to share that I have been loved and I have been in love with both women and men. And the guy that I was in love with last year, again, we weren't trying to be in love. For a long time, I didn't want to be in a relationship with a guy or a girl because I felt like I didn't have enough to give anybody. And I didn't. When I turned 30, I finally got my first apartment, which is where we are now, my studio. And this was a dream come true for me. But I didn't have nothing prior to that. I was like, how the hell am I going to be somebody something if I ain't got nothing? Right. Can't take a girl out, can't buy nobody, nothing. Like, I was like, ain't nobody finna do that. Like, who, what girl is yes. even going to want to be with me? They could be like, you ain't got no car. You ain't got no job. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Uh, you, you stay with your mother. Right. That's the one. That's the one. <laughs> like, what the, like, I felt like, Yucky. I felt like it, don't nobody wouldn't nobody want me. Not even no man. And that wasn't true. But <laughs> but I just wasn't. I wasn't willing to be with anybody because I was like, yeah, right, nah. Right. But when I got my own place, I was like, yeah. <laughs> it's lonely as hell in here. Right. Felt like I need some 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 people in here. <laughs> and so anyway, I met this guy, and it was it was easy. It was easy. First conversation we had, four hours on the phone. Mm. And every time we got on the phone, it was that long. Every time. We met each other under some very interesting circumstances. And then when, like, I don't know, it's just like when we, when we started to click and connect, it just, it just happened. Mm -hmm. It was like we looked up and was like, why do we know this much about each other? Why do we... Have this experience. I I I don't know. It was very interesting. The guys that I've dated in the past, just it just wasn't the same. It wasn't the same. And so I believe that he was the first guy that I ever fell in love with. I've said to guys before that I love them, but it just wasn't the same. It's not the same type of love. This type of love that I what I still currently have. And by the way, we're not together, which I'll get to that in a second. But. I just wanted to share with you this 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 beautiful moment, this this man that I met. He is older than me, and which I love. And what I enjoyed about him the most was that he I'm tall as hell and big as hell. You tall? As hell. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's new. And when he would hug me. Oh, being a man, and I'm an alpha male. I know a lot of y'all might roll your eyes at that, but I'm an alpha male. I take care of my family. I take care of myself. I take care of my responsibilities. I don't lie. I don't cheat. I'm strong. I'm I'm a fighter. I'm I'm a protector. All that. I'm an alpha male. So I'm usually, like I said, I'm usually the one who's doing the thing, the protecting, the hugging. The... But in this particular case, I remember he hugged me, and I was like. God, like it took my breath away. I was like, 
Because usually dudes are smaller than me. Like, they're... For whatever reason, skinny dudes be liking me. I don't know. And I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily discriminate. I don't really have a type. But these skinny guys be like short little dudes be like wanting me. And I be like, oh. And they're so little. Mm-hmm. But this was a man. Like, he's a tall, strong man. And he hugged me. And I remember going, like, I remember being like. <laughs> <laughs> and just like my breath was taken away. And I remember telling him, like, I was like, I think it's because I never really Nobody could ever do that to me. Yeah. And when I had that, I thought to myself, hey. mm-hmm. "Yeah, I can have that again mm-hmm. and again." And I and I and did <laughs> and did. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember telling him I felt protected, like in a way that my father always made me feel like I was protected anywhere I went. Mm-hmm. I still feel that way. But, and then myself, because, you know, I'm really about that life. But, <laughs> but when he would, when he hugged me, I felt protected. I, and being oh, the man that I am, it's like, I, I never had that before. I never had that feeling like, like, oh, wow, we were really killed for my audience. Like, right, you know, right, right. and he was so, he is so kind and smart and progressive and wants better for himself and his circumstance and his situation. He's come through a lot and he's still dealing with so many traumas and so many th- unhealed things that when we both fell deep, when we both started getting emotional and started getting, you know, he pulled back. Mm-hmm. He thought he was ready for something. He would, he would tell me things like, yeah, I told, I told these dudes, I told these people at work that I was gay. I was like, babe, but you're not gay. He was like, but you know, I don't care. Cause he, he a little, he, he can get a little street. So, you know, when you come from, the streets or whatever like that. If you pan or buy or whatever, they just say, they just, or everybody just right. say gay. Mm-hmm. So he was, I told him, I don't care. I don't care. I wish somebody would say something. You know, like he, he was ready to just like share who he, just like me, just like right. ready to share. Like he didn't care. And we were both on the same page. I thought that was very refreshing. That was very interesting. And he, he pulled away from me. He pulled away in a way that really hurt me bad. I had just lost my best friend. Two weeks later, I lost my uncle. And during that two weeks that I lost my uncle, he, go, the guy, ghosted me. And that hurt. I was somewhere, in a, I was in a depression. I, had, I was in a depression and I didn't identify it until November. Mm. When I asked him to come over to my house on Thanksgiving, and he said he was going to come, and then he chose someone else over me. My mother probably is going to call me because she was, I told her that a guy was coming to see me or kind of thing. And when he didn't show up, she was so mad for me. And I was like, mom, it's okay. I played it off. Mm. But what she did know was that I was in that bed, like. Right, right, right. I didn't cry, but I was in that bed really, like. My neck. And to make a long story short, it, we never worked out. We never worked out. He knows I love him. He loves me. And he told me, he just was like, I thought I was ready and I'm not. And then he revealed some more things to me and I said, okay, I can't, I can't save you. I can't, there's nothing, I mean, I, there's nothing I can do. Yeah. You got to come to this on your own. And that's why I started off this video the way I did. This man is pansexual too. And if you met him, if you were to see him, you would never know. Now, when you see me, people automatically assume things, which is why I never share my sexuality. Mm-hmm. Because if you come at me with arrogance, as if you know something, oh, I already know. What the fuck do you know? What you know? Oh, okay. That's when I'm uninterested. And I've had so many people throughout my life go, are you gay? Oh, you must be gay, right? Oh, I thought you was gay. And it's like, it's never by pan or anything. Mm-hmm. It's always like, oh, you dress that way because you're gay. Oh, you look that way because you're gay. Right. Nothing I do is because of my sexuality. I do not dress a certain way because of my sexuality. I do not look a certain way. My eyeliner, when I wear eyeliner, people are like, oh, you do that, oh, it's because you're gay. It has nothing to do with that. I wore black nails, eyeliner, black, black shadow, and I wore all black clothes all throughout high school because I love the goth aesthetic. And still to this day, I'm dripped in black because I love black. I love the goth aesthetic still to this day. And I wear eyeliner because it's an ode to Michael Jackson. That was something I kept to myself, now I'm sharing it with you. 
Michael Jackson Dangerous cover album had this beautiful eye line. I said, I love that. It was cool to me. That's why I did it. I didn't put it on because I was trying to attract men. I don't, first of all, let's be clear. All I need to do is get the fuck up in the morning. Hello? And, <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Take off that bonnet. And that's it. <laughs> and that's it. Uh -huh. I don't need to do nothing to attract men. Right. Or women. But men, specifically. Because I, I feel like women are <laughs> just a little bit more meticulous. But I don't have to do nothing to attract a man. So I, I, and I don't. And don't. Anything that I may do for like a specific person, that's like extra. Extra. Right, it's right. extra. I don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. So when people are like trying to piece things together, oh, your hair is that way because you like, you, you're gay. It's, that's, why I, that's when I become like mm -hmm. uninterested in sharing. Because if you're already believing the shit that's in your fucking head before I even open my mouth to tell you yeah. what the, who I am, yeah. then there's no reason for me to share anything with you. Agreed. There's no reason. Because no matter what I say, even now in this video, you're still right. going you're to take... You're going to believe what you're going to believe. Mm -hmm. gonna believe. So mm -hmm. that's, why I never, that's why I never shared who I was. Because people are going to believe what they want to believe. They're going to take my story, take my circumstances, and still, like, try you know... Frame it. Right, try to... Exactly. Mm -hmm. Oh, this happened because of this happened. Mm -hmm. Oh, this... Mm -hmm. It's like... That, okay, sweetie. There's nothing I can do or say. But again, like I said, I'm at a point right now, I'm so blessed that I don't care. Do I want to be with that man? Uh, not necessarily. The reason why is because I'm emotionally intelligent. I went five years plus in therapy and I have incredible emotional intelligence. So much so to know that just because you love somebody doesn't mean you're supposed to be with them. Mm -hmm. And I knew that when I fell in love with him. Mm -hmm. I fell in love with him because his absence reminded me of a piece that was missing and I knew that he was that, that piece for me. Plus he was beautiful and sexy and smart and progressive and and the way we loved on each other was so exceptional that I didn't want it to go. And when it left, for him and me, by the way, he shared with me, it was hard. Hmm. It was hard. And he didn't, he felt like he didn't want to hurt me. He felt like, he felt like if he would have stayed, then eventually he would have did something that would have hurt me or whatever like that. And he, I was like, but you don't understand that this is hurting me too. So. Yeah. I'm the one keep losing out. And we've, I mean, we've gone back and forth. He, he recently, he recently donated to me. And I was grateful because I blocked him on everything. So I don't know how the hell you saw that. <laughs> <laughs> but I was grateful. And the love is still there and the communication, even though I've tried to just, there's some way to communicate. I mean, I'm sure he's going to be listening to this. I say all that to say, it's possible. It's my point. Mm -hmm. It's possible. And the kind of men that I like, again, alpha men, responsible men, manly men, being with someone like me, it's possible. It's possible. It's possible and it was beautiful too. And there's so many nuances. There's so many things that I could say. There's so many things that I could share. Lord, there's so many things. Lord, Christine, the vault, Christina, the, the vault, vault. Mm -hmm. the vault. There are so many things I could, <laughs> that I could share, but this is just one story of one person, one pansexual man that made a choice and I'm happy. I'm more than happy. I'm comfortable. Mm. And I know for a fact that there are a few people who are going to be upset that I didn't share with them this part, and including two of my best friends who never heard any of these stories, and I feel bad. But there was a reason why I never shared this part of my life with them. And I just want to say to them right now, if you're watching and listening, I'm sorry. I should have shared with you a long time ago because I share with quite a few other people and I know that that fact alone can be something very hurtful. That wasn't my intention. It just so happened to be a thing and, and I'm sorry. I never wanted our relationship to change. I didn't want you to treat me like the quote unquote gay friend. Mm -hmm. I've never been treated like that and I felt like if I would have shared this with my close best friends, mm -hmm. that the relationship would have been different. And that's not fair to you all, to the both of you, because it's just the two of you. 
and I'm sorry. And before this comes out, I'm going to call them and I'm going to share with them. And hopefully, you know, we're still friends after this. But the thing that I didn't want to happen is this. Oh, we already knew. It's not like you tell us I ain't new. Mm. What did you know? What did you know? Then when you hit them with that, it's like, because this ain't about me liking men. Ain't nobody like, come on now. Like, that, that ain't it. Right. I don't give a damn that you know. I mean, I don't care. I never cared about that. Yeah. But my experiences, stories that I've told other people that I didn't tell you, that's going to make you feel away because it's like, why you ain't share this with me? Right. It's not about, oh, we already know. What the fuck do you know? I hate, when I tell you I hate that shit with a passion, because again, people will look at you and go, oh, that's why you yeah. doing this. Yeah. Oh, you like this because of this. I'm naturally who I am. Right. Nothing I'm doing is put on for attraction. It's just, this is who I am. This is why a lot of men like me because they look at me and they're like, you just, this is just who you is. Like mm -hmm. this, and they like that. Yeah. There are a lot of men who you would never know sure. likes men mm -hmm. who want to date me. I get hit on all the time. All the time. Yeah. All the time. And I'll be somewhere like, I'm really out here. Like, <laughs> you dusties. Like, nah. And I just be like, yo. I'm not even doing anything. And that's the point. I'm just being myself. I just am naturally who I am. So when everybody be like, oh, we already know. What the fuck do you know? What you know? Sit, sit down and tell me about my life. So hopefully you have an understanding. <laughs> hopefully you have an understanding of what pansexuality is. I've had all kinds of experiences. I've had all kinds of I've explored myself, especially in the last two years, definitely in the last two years, where I've tried things, where I've tested things out because I wanted to see, I wanted to just experience things. I wanted to, to really understand who I was in a different way. And now that I've settled on this thing, mm. I'm so happy that I know what I want. I know what would make me happy. I know the things that, you know, just how I like to operate and who I like to operate around and with. And even though I'm not with that guy that I love, I'm happy that I had that experience. Mm. I'm happy for all of my experiences. And again, like I said, I could write a whole book about it. But, <laughs> but I'm grateful. And I want to say thank you to him because I know you're watching or listening. I want to say thank you to Christina. I want to say thank you to... Kanisha and Renatha and to Shalia and to Tamika and to Natalia and to Tiara and all kinds of people. Let me just, I, you know, I just brought up, just thought it made me think of, real quick. This one girl said to me, this is another reason why I just don't be sharing. The, I, I was sharing some stuff with this one girl and she had the nerve to say, oh, but you know, there's only two sexualities, right? There's only like... Mm -hmm. Actually, I think she said there's only one sexuality. There's only heterosexual. The other things are fake. It's science. She was getting this information from this older white guy that she was screwing. Oh. And it's so funny because she was like 27 or something like that. And he was like much older. Now, again, I like older men, so I wasn't judging. But the point is, you're taking this information from some Anglo-Saxon mm. and looking at me and going, my experience is invalid because of this quote-unquote science that you got from him. Right. This is the reason why I don't talk to people. Because it's like... Unless you've lived my life, all this fucking science can be thrown out the window. Yep. Because you don't know my experience. You've not lived it. You've not been inside of my brain and my soul and my body and lived through life. Mm -hmm. And again, still to this day, I have struggles with understanding how people don't find it all attractive. I don't. I just, <laughs> when I see a sexy man, I'll be like, damn. When I see a sexy woman, I'll be like, damn. Trans or not, I just be like, wow, this is it all looks it all looks real delicious. <laughs> and no, I'm not into poly. I'm not into <laughs> I've never had a threesome. Like I'm not <laughs> as much of a Taurus freak I am. Uh -huh. mm. okay. No, I've not done that and I'm not interested. I don't even like one person. It's hard for me to I cannot imagine myself being in a relationship uh -huh. with two or three other mother. Yeah, so I can't and I've been offered. I've been offered. I could say some things. I've, been, I've had offers. I could have had all of this paid for. Mm. Let me get off. Let me, my mother said, don't share too much. I, <laughs> let, let me get, let me get. 
<laughs> I I hope you have an understanding, and I made this the last episode for a reason. I just wanted people to understand me a little bit more. And again, I just shared a bit, a tidbit of my life, yeah. a tidbit of my stories. Christina, this is the first time you're hearing quite you a few. I am so Thank proud you. of you. Like I know it wasn't like a coming out thing, yeah. but I know it was a struggle just to be like, do I really want to do this and that? Yeah. I am so proud. Thank you. For real, for real. Thank you, Christina. Really, truly, because you know, Christina really been. I've been sharing I, earlier today. I said four, two or three things. I said <laughs> I'm sharing too much with you, girl. Listen, let me get an NDA for your ass. Right, for real. Because no, the vault, did, it's closed. It's closed. Listen, I trust solid. you. I clearly, clearly, I trust right. you. Right, absolutely. Because <laughs> the things, the things. But yeah, hopefully y'all have a reference point now, and you can have some understanding. Please leave comments. If you have questions, more questions, I'll be open to answering them. And thank you. Thank you for listening. Listen, we're going to come back, season two, next year. And before we go, I just want you to, I really want y'all to understand who Christina is because our relationship is so serendipitous. I don't, I did, I thought I knew her, but I don't even really know her as much as I thought I did. And I want you all to get to know Christina before we end this podcast. That way we have an episode where you can now see, not that you've not seen her before, but you can see and fully understand a little bit more of who Christina is. And that's what you're going to get on this last segment of the Real for Real podcast, okay? So let's get into that. Thoughts from Introducing. <laughs> Can you imagine? Christina. I think I might keep that. <laughs> Christina. What up, what up? Listen, the voice of reason. Hey. You know why I called you the voice of reason? Why is that? Because I remember when I first met you in what, 2017 or something like that? Roughly. Somewhere I remember making jokes and stuff like that. And every joke that I made was a little, um, how do I say this? It was a little bit racy. Okay. Jokes. Okay. And you were like, no. Well, because you never know, because people be, and you just gave a, you gave a positive outlook on the little joke that I was making. Oh, okay. Every okay. time, and I was like, oh, she's one of those. <laughs> I try to be very PC. But that's you what are, it is. but yeah. you're. I think you're naturally that way, and that's why I call you the voice of reason because it's not put on. Oh yeah, yeah you yeah, really yeah. just be like, can we all just really get along? <laughs> and I'd be like, I don't give a fuck about these. Right, right, and right. Like, you like nice. I understand, but I here, and I I need people like that around yeah, me because I'm not uh-huh. giving you butt all day. <laughs> but you know, you're you're not that way. I I do. I want people to get to know you more. So okay, Christina, mm-hmm. pray low. Right. That's her name, y'all. That's my name. Okay. Sweet and low on OnlyFans. But <laughs> Coming soon. Coming uh, soon. Uh. But, you know, Christina Low, L-E-A-U, yes. on right. Instagram. Right. Where are you from? I'm from Mount Vernon, New York. Don't look at me like that. I am, though. I'm not, listen, we're not, Same. don't, you don't have to, we're, I don't know you right now, so. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, hey. Hi. I'm from Mount Vernon, New York, wow. originally. Wow, Mount uh-huh. Vernon. Is it in Denzel Washington from there? Yeah. Denzel Washington. Mm-hmm. Who else? Heavy D used to spend a lot oh, of time. Oh, Heavy D is you everything. You know, DMX and all of them. DM, listen. You feel me? Isn't that, it? well, I don't know you. Is he one of your favorite artists? DMX? I love him. Really? I'm so happy you asked that question. Anytime I'm feeling like I need to let off a little steam in a, a very correct way, okay, he's who I turn on. Decency and order. Mm-hmm. Okay, would you classify yourself as a hood rat? I would not classify myself as a hood rat. There are other people who may do that, but I wouldn't do that. Hmm. When I'm driving, maybe. Just, you know? when you're, just when you're driving? When I'm home. Let's go to the tape. It's like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Can you imagine? <laughs> and you somewhere like Man, in a supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, or jacking up one of your children. Oh no! So you're from Mount Vernon. I am. What did you want to be when you were a kid? Because I'm learning you too. Right. Yeah. When I was a little Christina, I wanted to be a singer. Wow. That's for real. For real. But can you sing? I can sing a little bit. <laughs> yes. Give us a little Pocahontas. What's your What's your favorite uh... musical? <laughs> What is my 
favorite. <laughs> Why did I say oh, Pocahontas? Beauty and the Beast. I don't oh, know. that was I was trying to think of that one, and Pocahontas so. came out. Mm-hmm. Him, guilty, get the beast. Not that one. Oh. Not that song. The opening. I, listen, I don't know. I told you I don't know that musical. What's the opening? Little town, such a quiet village. Every day, like the one before. Little town, full of. Waking up to say What's up? <laughs> yes, I remember that song. You right. You right. <laughs> wow. Listen. That's my joint. Listen, you need to be. I, we going to send this to Disney. Uh, can we please? We, we going to send this to Disney. We gonna, I'm going to take the little, time. I'm going to take the clip and give it to you. We're going to tag Disney. Okay, okay. Because we need you. I need you to get in some, some musicals. Please. Like, for real, for real. Please. You have that musical. You have a nice operatic voice. Oh, thank you. You know I don't give compliments, so when I do, <laughs> I mean that. <laughs> right, right, right. Mm. Okay, so you wanted to be a singer, and I then did. you went to high school. I also wanted to um, do ballet. Can you dance? Like, uh, like I mean, like, Oh, I was about to say, ah, uh, yes, I can. And see, and thus, <laughs> and such, the hood rat appears. But, no, so... I did ballet. Did, did you, you know that? Mm-mm, I didn't know that. I did ballet in elementary school and then in college. Get out. I had a ballet recital. Get out. I was 20. I almost fell off the stage. No lie. I believe it. I almost fell. And the whole audience was like... <gasps> right, right. And I was so embarrassed, but I still finished. Okay. That's the show. a star. I finished okay. the show. It was very embarrassing, though. I have never in my life... I, I Anyway, but we're talking about you. Um... <laughs> So you wanted to be a ballerina. Yeah. And you did not accomplish those goals. Mm. Mm. I mean, it's still possible. It's possible for a plain Melbourneian girl to become a ballerina. It's possible. Mm -hmm. I, okay, so <laughs> from there you, what, I mean, what was your life like around like 18, 19, like, you know, high school ages going into college? When did, did you go to college? I did go to college. Okay. What I college? went to several colleges. Oh, okay. I Listen. started at Fairfield University in Connecticut. Okay, Fairfield. Uh-huh. Then I went to Lehman College in the Bronx. Uh-huh. And then Georgia State. Georgia State? Mm -hmm. Georgia State? Yes. Mm -hmm. I went to Georgia State. I forgot you didn't like that voice. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was like, why are you looking at me like that? Uh -huh. No, I know. I have a thing um, with country accents. I just... That particular one. Yes, it's Georgia rough. State? Mm -hmm. Georgia State? Mm-hmm. So, okay, and you graduated from Georgia State? I did. W with what degree? Oh, holy yeah. I just, you know, not just graduated, but finally graduated. Listen. Okay? You got it. December 2020. Really? Yes, and I have a Bachelor of Arts in Sociology. Wow. Mm -hmm. I have a Bachelor's in con Contemporary Arts. Okay. I mean, what does that mean? Yeah. Anyway, but you're your, an artist. Right, but yours is like legit. <laughs> you can like do stuff. <laughs> And now, uh, like, what do you do for work? I don't know if I can really say that, but I work she, for. Well, she a CIA I agent. I got. I, I'll say it. You a CIA? She's a CIA agent. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Watch your mouth. Hello. And you got two kids. I do have two children. Beautiful when you children. asked about what was I doing at eighteen and nineteen, I was like, uh, <gasps> I was a mom. Hold up, down. <laughs> she was Mount Vernon then. Oh. Yes, I have my my first. Your mother's baby. gonna love this. I know. I can't wait. <laughs> have my first baby at eighteen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Who was Chon? My my baby boy. Okay, yes. Chon. And then a uh, baby girl when I was twenty one. Oh, they that far apart. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, three years. Wow, I didn't realize because she's so grown. That I thought they were like closer, like me and Dwight. Oh. Like you, like you and your sister and me and Dwight. I thought they were closer in age. Oh. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So, from from Mount Vernon, how did you get to like Atlanta or like, you know, Georgia? So, I was in Mount Vernon. Uh, I got pregnant, had my son. We stayed in Mount Vernon. I got pregnant with my daughter and. Hey, mom. She was like, it's 
going to be a bit of a struggle. Let's just be honest. She was like, <laughs> that ain't going to work here. We ain't got enough space, this, that, and the third. So my option at that point was to uh, go to a homeless shelter mm. or go to the Bronx where my Nana had a house. So I would go, I was used to going there anyway because I would go there every weekend or every other weekend, whatever the case is. Um, so I was like, I don't want to take my son and my unborn child to a shelter, which looking back probably would have been the better decision, but whatever. So, Especially considering it was the Bronx. I mean, I'm not trying to throw shade, I mean, but you hear things. <laughs> <laughs> so then I ended up in the Bronx and then um, Nana had already moved down here. In Atlanta, and she was selling. Oh, that was the same Nana. Yeah, Nana's from the Bronx. Well, she's from South Carolina, but she stayed in the Bronx for like. Listen, most of her I life. see why she. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so then, um, she was selling the house in the Bronx because it was girl. Because you lot. paused on that selling, I was like, Oh no! <laughs> selling the house selling in the Bronx. So then I was up with that same decision again, like where I'm gonna stay at. So it was either shelter or come down to Georgia, and I was like, Yeah. I think my children may have a better shot if I come down here. So everybody, anytime I'm like, oh my God, I don't really like Georgia. People are like, oh my God, well, how did you get down here? It wasn't by choice like that. It was right. by circumstance. So sometimes it gets hard to just, even though we've been here for a minute now, it still gets hard to acclimate because I didn't want to be here, mm-hmm. you know, in the first place. You wanted to stay in Mount Vernon? Not Mount Vernon, but I didn't. Like 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 uh, New York? Yeah, like I like the North. But girl, me too. Yeah, this, right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. What is your odd obsession with uh, coconut milk? Water. Water. Okay. Coconut water is very hydrating and, okay. and very refreshing. So it's not even about the taste. It's when like people it makes say, me feel. Okay, but when uh, people say it's very hydrating, how can you get more hydrating than water? Okay, because. Is it like science-y? It is. Okay. Okay. But real quick. But okay, off, so if I if I hold my nose, would it taste better? No. Does that even work? Because yes. that's never worked for me ever. Mm. Your taste buds might be in your throat. I don't know what I just said. <laughs> you might have to take that out. <laughs> we are both tired. I don't know why. <laughs> but Okay, but okay, so you like coconut water? Why? Yeah, because mm-hmm. it just feels like you ever be like real dry? No. And then you <laughs> sip something and you can feel it like go through your ribs and stuff. Yes, like, I know. That's about. what it feels like every, every time. time I, almost every Even time when I you wet? Cook. That came out <laughs> not, that was not, I was not going there because you said when you feel dry. I just meant like, oh, even, yeah. I was like, that got different. <laughs> this, that got different. That's not where I was going with that. So yeah, it makes me feel like that, and then it helps me when I want to sing and whatnot. It just, it's just. Good. Now I have heard singers say I've heard that for a very long time. Oh, like, really? oh drink some coconut water. Yeah. And I remember, like I said, I remember drinking it many years ago. Going. <gasps> yeah. No, the first time I had it, I was like. And then just earlier today, I said, Christina. What did you say? Girl. <laughs> Everybody don't need to know everything. Okay. What did I say? What's, um, I'm trying to remember the exact joke because it was brilliant. But um, I might have to put it in my stand-up special because that was... Oh, you know, no, yeah, we're not sharing that. Right, right, right. Ah, I just remember. I don't think you would. Yeah, no. Um, that's very adult. Your, your daughter might watch Hello? this. Mm-hmm. Your children might watch this one day. But okay. Um, I guess what I want to wrap up with is... What was your first impression of me? Well, how did you find me? Oh, day, our mutual friend. I don't okay. know how I somehow. That's what I don't know right. because I know you was doing the um, casting. Yes. For National Melanin Day, the first one, and so I don't know. I guess O Day told me about you. So then I entered the casting. Oh. And I then thought you, you selected were, me. Yes, I thought you were following me on the Black Media, and that's how you found that. But O'Day told you. No, I probably was following you because okay. of him. Okay. Maybe he said something, or whatever. And then, yeah, that part is a little blurry to me still because it really don't make sense to me. But I found you that way. And then he was like, "You selected me." And then after that, he's like, "Oh well, I didn't know that you were so close to that. I'll use yeah. you for other things." And I was like, "Okay," but in my head, I was like, "He ain't gonna call me." You or you know like hit me up, ask me for something, and you I did, listen, and I was I like, "Oh, okay." 
I said, this might work. And then I just been. Because you were, yeah. I, like I said, you were so nice. Oh, and like, but you. like naturally nice. You weren't mm-hmm. like putting it on. Mm-hmm. And I respected that. Plus, I thought you were really gorgeous. I was like, that oh. haircut. I was like, ah, sickening. It was sickening. Let's look at the picture. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pull up the footage. Yeah. I'm going to put it up there. Because yeah. I, I still do have it. Yeah. That your skin color, everything. I was like, yes, who is this? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> who? Okay, yeah. So, yeah, so that's how you found. So, what was your first impression of me? I just thought you were really cool. Thank and you. I thought you were talented. And I was like, all right, he got me up here holding his gold reflector, whatever. I, you know what? I don't remember that, but I will absolutely remember? give somebody a golden reflector to hold. <laughs> I don't care who you are. I'd be like, oh, excuse me, what's your name? Did you hold the you know, because we had talks before, and you was like, oh, can, can you do it for me, and I'll mention your name in the credits or something like that, yes! remember? So we was talking for, I don't know. But you know what? I have I do that a lot. So okay. that's why it's not, I don't remember yeah, you particularly, like, but because mm. I, I do that a lot. I'm like, oh, okay, could you come and help? <laughs> and that wasn't even, I didn't even care about that part, like, oh, mentioning my name, whatever. I was just like, okay. I was so grateful because I had an ass- I had an assistant, and that just did not work out. And I remember the first time I called you where I felt like, well, let me invite her over to see if she would be open to more with me. Mm -hmm. And I said, hi, Christina. I need you to help me clean my place. I ain't got no money, but I'm going to cook for you. (laughs) And when she said, okay, cool, I was like, why would this girl come over here (laughs) to help a grown man clean his house? And we was up in here cleaning. Uh-huh. Girl, I almost cried. I was so thankful because <laughs> I really needed help. I remember that one. And we was up. We cleaned. My studio was, I had a lot less stuff uh-huh. at the time. But uh-huh. it was, it, I, it needed to be clean. And she helped me. And I just was like, oh my gosh. When you can find somebody like that who is willing to just. And she said to me, I want to be here because I like, I like spending time with you. Mm-hmm. It's fun. Mm-hmm. And it's like a break away from, you know, my, my my ordinary life and it's fun and i was just like that is so nice because I, I i mean but we have fun but it's like that every single time hey man. even if it's not even if we just not doing nothing just talking about i nothing, think we click just... because as much as as much as you think i'm fun or funny and i am i <laughs> <laughs> i think you are so funny and like you get it like that's the thing you get it okay I'm intelligent. I, I speak uh-huh. fast. I say a lot of intelligent jokes. I think you're highly intelligent. Oh, I've you. always thought that because I say some stuff and you be catching. You ca- you've never dropped the ball. Okay. And you be catching it, and I'd be like, let's see. Even my mother noticed this. She was like, Christina was on it. I was like, really? You, I said, you saw that, right? Like, I didn't even have to explain. But I feel like that's the same way about you though, because I'll say something. I'm like, it didn't catch him, and you like, like repeat. I'm like, oh, you got he it. You me. <laughs> It's rare. Yeah, it's it rare. Is. It's it rare. Is. And I was just, I mean, like I said, I was just so grateful because it's like, you, you just, you, you seldom come across people like you. Mm. You, I mean, Absolutely. I don't pay her to do this podcast. I forced her to be <laughs> the producer. <laughs> she was like producer. Yeah. She, you know, I had to. Teach. I was like, would you press record? You was like, right you, okay, how you press this? I am. How you hold this camera? Right. So, <laughs> you know, a lot of people were like, where's your? Pro-? They think you're really like. They're like, oh, your producer, I got you. I was like, and I just let them believe it, because what the hell? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> but honestly, she's like just willing to learn and help me, like, and help me. And I'm willing to do so much. Had I had had some things happened, let's just say you would you would you would you 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 I would have had to hit your cash app a couple uh, few times. Uh, uh, uh. And which I have in the past. Yes. We've gotten I've has. gotten I've listened. Let's Okay, he definitely One has. thing I like to do is pay people when I have it. When I have it. You sure do, though. Okay, yeah. so listen. If I'm getting it, we getting this. Right. Yeah. Not even expecting that joint. And I see it, I'm like, <laughs> Right. Yeah. And because I love surprising people. I'll be like, here, yeah, boom, and extra. <laughs> yeah. And I am not even, I'm not trying to even be funny either. I'm really not. But it's not like she be doing the grunt of the work. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, she right. be helping as much as she can. It's not like she's doing anything ex- hard or difficult yeah. or like long like you know it's not stress and yeah. i still pay like you know what i'm saying because i'm like Genesis. just just the fact that you're here you don't understand how much this is making me feel comfortable because i be in circumstances where people i do not know okay and when i have somebody that's like mm, child please your jail remember we yeah, were, yeah, yeah, yeah. me and Deja, you 
it's like it makes me it makes me feel better. So yeah. I'm just internally grateful. And I hope people listen, Disney. <laughs> I hope they reach out to Christina. Thank Halo. you. Listen, I'm her manager. I take 25 percent. Hello. And 20, look, 20, 38 <laughs> percent. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> um, but yes, I'm just. Yeah. I hope. I hope people understand you more and understand why I did this. And I, I wanted her to be the voice of reason. I always like those shows where, like Martin, or you know, like where you where you hear something or you just don't really know who it is. But somebody who has a sound thing or somebody who gets the joke or, you know, I just always enjoy that. So even if I was on television or if I did this podcast in a different way, she would be here. You know, especially if I was on TV. Then you, that would be your check. Hello? That's what we really waiting on. Listen, so. and you would be my person. You would be my <laughs> well, person. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Because you're funny. You're, you know, likable. You're talented. You know, all those things. You're, you're made for this. And this is my way of introducing people to you, hopefully, through my platform. That way you can grow on, on, on your platform. And it just all works out. So listen, we listen. I'm about to get this money. Hello. Listen. That's coming. You need to head on over up north. Mid, mid, north. Uh -huh. And when you get back, <laughs> we're going to get back to work next year. Next year. We With a little bit back, more pep in your step. Hello. Mm -hmm. Hopefully a little... A little, a little, a little, 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 little schminner, a little, little schminner, a little bit, a little schminner. Bring it in a little. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> girl, see, this is why. This is why. <laughs> and so, yeah, this this gonna be the last part of the podcast, episode ten. Like I said, is the last episode for this season. And I just I thought this would be such a great way to end it, even though um, somebody very close to me didn't want me to do it. I felt like ending the podcast with a song because I'm a singer and a lot of you may not know that, but the ones who do, they love hearing me sing. I sing all the time on the Black Media Instagram Live and I just want to play you something really quickly, something very encouraging that one of my best friends, her name is Shalia Harris. I just wanted to make sure that you knew her name. This is what she sent to me when I told her that I was going to be singing. Nobody is going to believe a grown ass man bursting out into Stevie Wonder. So I just wanted Wanda. to share that with Good you. Luck. Sometimes it could be your best friends, just very discouraging. Okay, I lied. She was not encouraging. She was very discouraging in fact when i told her i was gonna sing on a podcast she laughed at me for an entire hour on the phone the other night and i was like why are you laughing she was like why would you just bust into song like that i was like i'm not going to just bust into song i'm a, like it's first of all i'm first of all i'm an amazing vocalist so let's start there <clears throat> second of all <laughs> christina she did me dirty second of all like why wouldn't somebody want to hear me sing why can't i just bust out in song why are you always making it a thing She's weird. It's not me. It's her. So I want everybody to find her if you can. And just, you know, like, why would you do that to Tahir? I thought y'all was friends. Listen. Mm -hmm. And slipped right into it just like she told me not to do it. I hope she's watching. She's probably not. Listen. Lately I've had the strangest feeling With no vivid reason here to find Yet the thought of losing you's been hanging Round my mind Far more frequently you're wearing perfume With you say no special place to go Coming back soon. Oh, you don't know. Never know. I'm a man of many wishes. Hope my premonition misses. But what it really is, my eyes won't let me hide. Cause they always start. For Shalia. <laughs> and this time could mean good But not for a long time, right, Christina? Not for long. We'll be back next season. We sure will. I'll make sure to see you next year, everyone. <laughs> My prayer is that I, through comedy, entertainment, and personal experiences, 
will help each and every listener seek understanding for one another. I will not always get it right. I will change my mind, and I may even speak out of turn. But I do this with love, and I'm asking for grace to heal through conversations in a safe space, to tackle community issues that the truth will reveal with no circumlocution, just the real. Listen. Thank let's you. let's pause for a second. Mm -hmm. Make sure this bitch is still on. Oh. <laughs> How you missed that whole thing? I told you it was a ghost this <laughs> God's good. Okay, amen. All the time. I cannot believe I just smacked my fucking head up in the